Good morning. Our service continues on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him and all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Acts. When Peter saw the astonishment of those who had seen the lame man healed, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power and or piety, we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first epistle of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has ever seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you're able and join me in singing our gradual hymn, hymn number 523, verses 1 and 4. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. 
Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We all have an idea of what heaven looks like. Pop culture has given given us many variations, but what comes to my mind looks something like this. We die, and our soul whatever that is, leaves our body and floats up into the clouds toward a bright light. A bearded man with a long robe stands at a pearly gate and either lets you in or rejects you. If you get in, you continue through the gate, floating, to where other disembodied souls stand waiting for you. Everyone is kind of ghost-like, resembling their earthly bodies, but kind of wistful and translucent. You and this gang of souls then spend eternity sitting on clouds while little naked baby angels fly around and someone plays a harp in the background. You have finally been liberated from the torture of bodily life and never will you have to go back to that dreadful earth. You simply get to float forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But wait, does this really sound good? Does this sound like the eternity that God wants for God's children? Is this the Christian hope? In our gospel reading today, we get Luke's resurrection appearance story. Jesus, after having been through the torture of Holy Week, stands before his disciples with a message of peace. And the disciples are terrified because they think they are seeing a ghost. Jesus senses the doubt of the disciples, and he says, Look at my hands and feet. Touch me and see me, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. The disciples are joyful at this, yet Jesus knows they still don't quite believe. So to prove that he is real, he asks them for something to eat and gobbles down a fish right there in front of him. A ghost cannot eat. Surely you must believe now. When Jesus died, he didn't become a disembodied soul. He didn't leave his body and float up into the clouds and hover with the naked baby angels. No, Jesus was resurrected in a new body. He had real hands and real feet and real bones and flesh, and he could eat real fish. How marvelous. Just as marvelous is that what happened to Jesus will one day happen to all of us. For the Christian hope is not for each of us to die and float up separately into the sky, but the biblical hope is rather for the day when all will be renewed, when there will be a new creation and we will all be resurrected with new bodies. In Romans 8, we read that God, who raised Christ from the dead, will give life to your mortal bodies. Like Christ, we have hope that God will give life to our bodies again for a bodily resurrection where our hands and feet can be seen and we will be capable of eating fish and hopefully other things too. 
Romans tells us that creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. That creation will be set free from its bondage. That we who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly while we wait for the redemption of our bodies. We have hope, not just for new, real bodies, but for an entire new, real creation. Our hope is not to escape our bodies. The body is not evil. It is the good creation of God. We likewise do not hope to escape the earth. Neither is it evil, but also the good creation of God. But we are confused about heaven. We think of heaven as up there, while we're down here. Heaven is the place to escape earth. But the early Christians didn't think that they were part of a literally tiered universe. Up in the heavens was used metaphorically. God is above. God is greater and more powerful than us down below. Heaven and earth aren't two different localities, but rather, as N.T. Wright puts it, two different kinds of space, time, and matter. In Christ, the heavens and the earth, God's space and our space, have begun to fuse. But one day they will be joined together. After the bodily resurrection of Jesus, he ascended into heaven. Jesus is in heaven, it's true. In God's time, space, and matter. But this heaven has begun to break in with the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And one day we'll break in completely and there will be a grand joining of all that is. We will finally be able to share all our space, time, and matter with God in new resurrected bodies, in a new creation. Of course, we have no way of knowing exactly what this will look like. This is not information that we are privy to. But we know it will be a bodily, earthly place. It won't be just for lounging and harp playing and sitting on clouds. We will work and worship and use our talents and skills for good. What a magnificent hope this is. New creation isn't here yet, but it has begun in Jesus. This is what is always referred to in divinity school as the already and not yet. In 1 Corinthians, we read that if anyone is in Christ, she is a new creation. In Jesus and with the coming of the Holy Spirit, the body of Christ, that is the church, is already enabled to do God's work of new creation, to be this new creation. But it has not yet come to fruition, which is clear when we look at the world around us. Both our bodies and our world are broken. But with Jesus, something spectacular has happened. God has begun a project of redeeming creation. And as Christians, we have been enabled to participate in this already, knowing that God has something fantastic in store, but it isn't fully here yet. This is all great news for us. It means that our hope doesn't lie in death, that we don't sit around waiting to escape our bodies, to float on to where the real good stuff is. What we do in this life matters. It's true, we await the second coming of Christ. We await the resurrection and new creation and a time when everything will be set right. But as Christians, we have this grand charge from God to be the already in a world that is not yet. Since God's space and our space will one day fuse, the good that we do here will continue on. The good of the present will last into God's future. As the body of Christ, we have the responsibility of being the already of bearing witness to the resurrected Jesus in a broken world. Christ showed us the way. 
It is in our discipleship that we are able to be part of God's new creation that is not here yet. When we live as followers of Christ, when we liberate the oppressed, visit the sick and dying, feed the hungry, take care of creation, and work for peace, when we love our neighbor in the deeply profound way that Jesus did, we collaborate with God to be the new creation in a broken world. Jesus was resurrected in the body. What the disciples saw that day was Christ with flesh and bones, even able to eat a fish. We Christians have that same hope for resurrected bodies and for new creation. But for now, there is work to be done as we partner with God to be the already in a world that is not yet. Praise be to the risen body of Christ. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the prayer book. We believe in one God. prayers of the people this morning follow form four, beginning on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray today for the Church of Ireland and the Diocese of Armagh. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Andrew's Church, Hall River, Church of the Holy Innocents, Henderson, and St. John's Church, Henderson. And in our own parish, we pray for our preacher and seminarian, Hannah Warner, as she concludes her ministry with us on May 6th. And we give thanks for both our adult and treble choirs. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, 
mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We remember today all people involved in conflict and war, especially Cole Reynolds, Frederick Slott, Joshua Trumbull, Mark McLaughlin, Andrew Hooper, and Jan Scott. And we remember all others who have requested our prayers for Pat Pewitt, John Lawson, P.J. Parker, Connie Molinaro, Walter Morse, Kate Rehnquist, Catherine Caudle Graves, Gary Wooten, Burns Blackwell, Joe Murray, Cecilia Walker, the Payne family, Joe Vikes, Katie Jackson, James Bustard, Lenore Beckley, Buster Brown, for all residents of rehabilitation and assisted living facilities, and anyone else you wish to name either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. and we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We remember especially today Alan Ross Payne, James Alexander, and all those in our armed forces who died this past week. For Philip C.S. Schiller, Ramon T. Capet, Abraham Tarwo, Tanner S. Higgins, David P. Nowachik, Aaron M. Faust, and anyone else you wish to name, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning again uh, on this rainy Sunday morning. And uh, welcome, as always, to any newcomers or visitors today. If you are new and without a spiritual home, we would love to have you as a part of our community here. And you can let us know who you are by filling out a pew card and leaving it with one of our ushers on your way out the door so that I can have a chance to set up a time to greet you in a more personal way. Next Sunday, uh, April 29th, I want to note that there will be a luncheon discussion from 11.45 to 1.15 in the Great Hall by the Reverend Sarah Job on the spirituality of pregnancy. Very timely topic in my life. And she will be uh, exploring themes uh, from her book, Creating with God, The Holy, Confusing Blessedness of Pregnancy. So if you are interested in attending that luncheon, please do RSVP with our Christian Formation Director, Elizabeth Costello. And I would like to say thank you to our 20s and 30s group who are helping to host this event. I also want you to mark on your calendars that May 6th, two weeks from today, is a Youth Sunday, and we will be having our graduating seniors preaching the sermon that day, and that will be uh, Kelly Autry, Raleigh Adams, and Max Ford. And following the late service on the 6th of May, uh, we'll all have an opportunity to hear from our recently returned J2A pilgrims about their trip to Ireland. Uh, so please do uh, come to that if you're able. Also, uh, as noted in the prayers uh, today, May 6th uh, will additionally be the last Sunday that our seminarian, Hannah Warner, uh, is with us in that capacity. And um, we will also have an opportunity to thank Hannah. It's um, been a quick eight or nine months, but she has, uh, she's impacted our parish greatly uh, during her time here, and we thank her for her words this morning and for her ministry uh, in our midst. And I would like to welcome... Uh, her boyfriend and her mother and father, who are all here uh, with us this morning. Finally, I'd like to give thanks to our flautist, Linda Seikert, who's uh, helping to supplement our music today. With that, we now continue our worship with the offering of our gifts. Ascribe to the Lord the honor, do his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
361 of the prayer book with Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen to sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for all of us, the people of God. Communion prayer, found on page 366 of the prayer book. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now, may Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. <laughs> Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.